Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Two Opinionated. I'm so excited today. I've got actress Nikki Builder back with me. So welcome, Nikki. Hi there. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing so good. I'm so happy you came on the show. I was just thrilled to death to get your email. That was that was very nice of you. Oh, well, how else are we going to get in touch? Well, an agent, I guess. But my oh. agent is just what my agent. It's an agent thing. They literally just, you know, forward me. Inquiry. I love that. Yeah. So yeah. then I can decide. And I was like, you know what? I think podcast interviews are fun. Well, I think that's terrific. And so nice of you to say, you know, podcasting can, it gets a little bit of a, I don't want to say a bad rap because some of it's deserved, but there's just so many, there's so many out there and yeah. most of them aren't the best. So, <laughs> so I understand when people are like, I don't know. You know, but right, right, I'm so right. happy that you gave us a shot. Yeah, well, of course. <laughs> My pleasure to be here. Well, so I like to start um, here. Talk a little bit about what got you into acting. You know, how did you get into the entertainment business? Oh, my goodness. Um, well, you know, I was I grew up a dancer. I was a dancer since I was oh. three years old. Yeah. And um, and I had always um, I had always been drawn to, you know, TV shows and actors and just the entertainment industry. Um, and then when I was when I was little, I used to um, act out scenes from like, I'm, and I'm totally going to age myself, but I used to act out scenes from like Growing Pains, Family Ties, Cosby Show, you know. So uh, so like you know, I I'd be in the living room and you know my brother would walk in the room and be like, Nick, who are you talking to? I'm like, no, I'm acting out a scene from Growing Pains, you know. <laughs> So I think my parents kind of suspected I, you know, I had this, uh, this niche for acting. And then it was when I was, um, I think a sophomore in high school, um, I was in theater class and we had a special guest speaker that came in um, and she ran a um, TV and film acting school in Dallas. And I, and she was just a special guest speaker. And so then I got so excited and I went home, told my mom, I'm like, mom, you gotta, I've gotta take these, these acting classes. And uh, so I started taking acting classes and, um, and of course, I mean, I've always been in love with acting, I always knew that it was a part of my path, nope. but then to actually get like official real training at like a real TV and film acting school. And, um, and uh, so, yeah, so I got involved with, uh, with the school and then they had a program there where um, if you're chosen, you'd get to uh, come out to Los Angeles for the summer and um and in audition and you know you, you have agents and you come out here and just audition and try to land some work for the month that you're out here so i had a little experience going into it and then um, i i'd always known i was going to move to los angeles ever since ever since i can remember so it was you know it's not like i just it's not like i just sprung it on mom and dad hey guys moving to hollywood yeah, i'm <laughs> um, out <laughs> peace <laughs> no they um they had many years to you know mentally and emotionally prepare themselves yeah and so um but i'm very lucky to have you know a very supportive family and very supportive parents um especially being the youngest and the only daughter and uh you know growing up in texas and you know having parents who were you know, fairly conservative and, you know, to actually trust and allow their little baby to move out to, to LA um, is that, yeah, that's, I mean, but like, I, I truly believe that we all have um, a path is part of the plan, the higher, the bigger picture. And I think my parents maybe knew that. So they yeah, you don't usually it. have it figured out that early though. I knew since I was so young, like I yes. literally remember being young and just knowing that I'm going to move to LA and then I would incorporate it with certain TV shows that I would watch. Like I used to love, there was a show called in living color with Damon. I loved Wayne. Was yeah. I loved oh, it. Was living color. it was amazing. It was so innovative. Jennifer Lopez was, was on there. Yeah. It was yeah. incredible. They had so Jim Carrey and Rosie Perez. They had so many yep. great people in there and, you know, but I was still a dancer at that time. So I would watch it for the fly girls and oh, I, used to, yeah. I used to want to be a fly girl so bad. <laughs> And then I and then I found out that dancers didn't make that much money, so I was like, no, maybe I'll do the acting thing. Yeah. I'll um, adjust. I know, right? I, I can adjust. Um, so, but even watching that show, I I just remember having that feeling of knowing that oh, I'm gonna be out there where they take the show. Like I just yeah. knew. And so every show that I would watch, I just had this this you know this feeling of, of I'm going to be out in LA right when I graduated from high school and moving out there. Sure enough, I did. 
Yeah, that's, that's amazing. You brought up um, the uh, Thursday night lineup from back in those days. That was, I still think though that's the best TV block ever. Hands down. I mean, especially back then. Like, and, yes. and maybe we're a little nostalgic, you know, maybe we're related to when we were younger. But it was, I mean, that was some of the best television of, I think, you know, um, American television in this country yes. was that one Thursday night. You know, you had you had Family Ties, you had Cosby Show, you had Growing Pains. It was, and Growing I mean, that was like, that was a night that I looked forward to. Yeah. Night Court was on there for a little while. I actually remember Night Court because my dad was a big fan of that show. So we'd all sit around as a family and we'd watch the whole lineup. But yeah, I loved Night Court. Well, and then you had, like like when I was younger, the 10 o'clock program was Hill Street Blues. And then later it became L.A. Law. But they were yes. still awesome. Both of them were really good. That's right. It was L.A. Law. You're right. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. I was a little too young for Hill Street Blues. Or at least my parents maybe didn't let me when I was really, really young. But I do remember it. And I do and then I do, I do remember L.A. Law. And then when, yeah. when did NYPD Blue come into the mix? Was that later? Yeah, that was probably early 90s that that, that one came out. Okay, okay. And yeah, yeah, Blue was the one. Someone else, this just came out not that long ago. A friend of mine was like, do you remember Hill Street Blues? And I'm like, well, I mean, vaguely, not really, because I, <laughs> I, I never watched it because it was on too late. Yeah. I'm, like, there was, I'm like, it's not that it was before my time. I was just a little too young for You're it. You're just young. I remember, yeah. And then I remember, I go, but my time was, was NYPD Blue. Like, I remember distinctly NYPD Blue. That was a very racy show at the time. It, right? I mean, you know, now they're showing everything. But, like, I remember that was back when Dennis Franz was it? There was a butt shot, the famous yes. butt shot or whatever. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that was really before internet and stuff. But, I mean, that blew up the magazines and the oh, nightly gosh. news stuff. That was a big deal, you know. <laughs> huge deal. Now, look where we are now. <laughs> I know. I know. It's nothing now. Nothing. Yeah, but shot, it doesn't matter. shot, God knows what else. Yeah, 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 and I mean, even on the, uh, I mean, the networks are still tamer. But oh yeah, yeah, for sure. If you took the shows now and compared them back then, there's no comparison. Like HBO Max and all the streaming yeah. shows, all the Netflix shows. I mean, there's there's no, and that's and that's actually to be expected because with network, they're having to kind of comply with the mm-hmm. network regulations. Um, but with you know with other shows that are you know like HBO Max or showtime or um netflix hulu yeah there really aren't those limits they don't have those same limits so they can just kind of probably more realistic maybe not as good for the younger people (laughs) (laughs) that's that's yes yes but i think i think that's kind of what people want to say and i'm not necessarily talking about nudity and stuff i'm just saying in general i think people really want to see more rawness in TV yeah, shows, agree. you know, they want yeah. to see that level of, of edginess, but like also real, and it's, it's just raw. There's a rawness yeah. to it that I think um, that people are m- more drawn to, a little bit more so than you know the standard safety network shows. Yeah, although I will admit, as I've gotten older, like when I was growing up, I never liked the happy ending. I was like, oh, why can't it just, it should end on a twist or something. And then, but now everything ends on a twist. Now I'm like, I kind of miss the happy ending. <laughs> See, it's so, it's so funny because I, I mean, yes, I like a show. Like when, okay. So when I binge, like if I'm going to binge something, I commit, like I commit. Yep. Don't text me. Don't That's call right. me. I'm like, I'm like, dude, I'm on episode five of Yellow Jackets. You know better than this, you know? And like, I mean, I commit hardcore. So, but like, it's one of those, I'm one of those that, okay, it doesn't have to be a happy ending, but I need some level of like conclusion. I need resolve, some yes. degree of resolve. Now I understand they can't, maybe they have to leave open doors for another season. Sure. But there's nothing worse than when you've watched that episode 10 or whatever episode number it is, and it's over and you're like, but, yeah. but, but I need yeah. to know, I need to know. Who, what happened to her and what's going on? And, yep. and, how, and wait, who was that? You're like, I ha- oh, it drives me crazy. I mean, I'm, not, awesome. I'm not a fan me. of that either. Because, yeah, you put all that time in and then the yep. end comes and you don't know the conclusion. It's just left, it's which I guess like, is life. Like, but Yeah, I know, right? But it's almost like you have that. It's like I have this, like, you know, I'm like, 
I feel to be abandoned. Like I dedicated a part of my life to you. <laughs> I gave you so much. Hours. I've given you 48 hours of all 10 episodes. And now you're just going to abandon me for God knows how long for season two comes out. Yeah. You miss, I kind of miss like, like you're, you're a little younger than I am, but, but we grew up around the same, same era. When if you, you had like appointment TV. So if you missed when a program aired, well, you were out of luck till summer when they might oh, yeah. show a rerun. You know, so you made sure to be there. Oh, oh yeah. terrible! Like you, I mean, you could not make plans. Like if I had, if I had like a, you know, like a like a dance rehearsal or something, I would. Oh, well, better be better be over by you know six forty-five right. because seven o'clock. You know, this is back when seven o'clock was the you know seven to eight, yeah. eight to nine. Um, and like you know, because I had to watch my line because we didn't have any other options. If you missed it. You missed it, Anthony. You missed it. Rerun. Yeah, I kind of miss those days now, but back then I hated them because yeah, oh, yeah. if you missed it, yeah, oh, you're yeah. just praying for a rerun in six months yeah. or something. Exactly. exactly. The only way you're going to get to see it. accessible to you, which I think is kind of cool though too. It is. It is. Both of them have their advantages. I, yeah. I did kind of like like back then, everybody was in the same boat, so there wasn't a ton of stuff going on. By yep. seven o'clock. Everybody was like, we're ending now because everybody's got to get home. Oh, yeah, shit. No, it's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> and now it's like unheard of, at least for, I mean, I guess because I'm in, you know, I'm also Pacific Standard Time. So I'm on the West Coast. So TV shows don't start at like seven o'clock is still like, you know, entertainment or, you know, extra and like the news and stuff like that. So our TV, you know, doesn't even network till it doesn't even start till at least eight. That's right. Exactly right. So you've been in so many just absolutely terrific things. So, so I like to go around to everybody in the family, and I'm like, where have you seen this person before? To see what their answer is. You know, so I yeah, ask the kids yeah. and my wife and everybody. So, yeah. so my oldest, who was born in 94, um, it's bringing on, right? So, so even though it, she was too young when it first came out, right. that's the one, as soon as she was old enough and we let her, let her see it, that's her movie. Yeah. She's like, so I showed her that and she's like, Dad, it's Whitney. <laughs> oh, I love that. Well, that's how that's about, I think, the same year that my my oldest niece was born as well. And she was too young, obviously, you know, when it came, but like I think she, I think, I think her parents let her watch it for the first time. I think when she was like five or six, just because yeah, I yeah. was in it. Just because I was in it. And right, like, right. And she would be old enough to identify, oh. You know, so, um, but yeah, that's, that's what, that's what, um, and, and it's, what's cool about Bring It On is that I've noticed it's turned out to be sort of a, a timeless movie. It really, it really is. It spans across like three major generations. It, it, you know, the, the Gen Xers, they were, you know, that's the movie that they watched in the movie theaters when it came out. <laughs> Same with millennials, but then, then you had the second half of the millennials that were maybe a little too young when it first came out, but then they saw it shortly after. And yeah. then now you've got Gen Z, and, and you would think, well, Gen Z was a little before their time, but they've all seen it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's, it's, such, it's still such a, a good movie. And there was, I can't remember which uh, cable network or regular, I, I can't remember who got it, but somebody got it about the time she was probably eight or 10, something like that. And that's probably when she first saw it and just, loved it. that's the one that resonates with her. So that's Aww. pretty cool. That's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Now, if you asked me, like, you, like I know everything you've been in now, yeah. but if yeah. you asked me back then, I would have been like, uh, she was one of the uh, Cordettes. <laughs> Cordettes. I was a big Buffy so, fan. Yeah. Okay. Here's what's so funny about that is because I, I'm, it never fails to shock me as much as I've gotten recognized for Buffy, which I had, you know, smaller, like how many episodes did I do? Did I do a couple? I think it was two, few. but I think one of them, I, it didn't like, it didn't air initially because it was in like the pilot, but, but yeah, since exactly. then they have shown. Yeah. Yeah. So they've shown funny. that. I, I Oh my God, it's nuts because people will say, oh my God, you were in, you were in Buffy the Vit, you were a Cordette. And then, and then one episode, you got the blood sucked out of you in that, in that blood sucking machine. And, and I'm like, I vaguely remember this because it was so long ago. <laughs> I'm like, I would never in a million years think yep. anyone would even remotely recognize me 
from doing, you know, just a, co a couple episodes of, of that show. And that's so funny, Fans. but fun fact. So when they were casting for that show and they were casting the series regulars, I had actually studio tested for the role of Willow. Really? It was me and then another girl who was the original Willow in the pilot. Yeah. And then um, she ended up getting it or she went on to network. I don't I don't remember. Again, this was so long ago and I'm so old now. But the, but I remember I tested for it and then um, that other girl got it. And then, of course, after the pilot, they end up casting, they end up recasting uh, Willow. And of course, then Allison Hannigan took over. That's, I, I love that type of uh, background stuff. I always think it would be, especially on shows that have those long runs, at yeah. some point in the series, they should do some type of dream sequence or, you know, you know, show like Buffy, it would have been easy to do where oh, totally. you have you have like all the people that the roles they originally tried out for, that's who they play in that episode. Would that not be, oh, that's a great idea. I know. I think that's, that's a, a really good idea. Great idea. Because there's, there really are a ton of really cool, fun fact stories from actors that you don't find out until long yeah. after the show has been released that you're like, oh my God, you you originally were up for a different role, and, and it, but then they didn't get it and they end up getting another role, but then you can't imagine that actor in that other role. You can only imagine them in this role. Right. So I always find that so cool. I do too. I, but don't, you could just pick an episode and do it exactly the same, just but as how, like a dream sequence, but have the role. different people playing the roles. I think that'd be fun. That's, a, that's actually a genius idea. Yeah. There's well, another podcast there. for you. There's another. There's another <laughs> idea for. A you know, that's actually a really good idea for a podcast. It actually to, is to have people on to talk about the roles that they. Yeah. Didn't get, or that they they got moved out of the role into a different right. role. I've always thought about I, I thought about doing a podcast and about and maybe call it like the casting couch. And what it would be is I would I I would interview. It would be about I get actors and speak with casting directors. And oh. what I would do is have the casting directors um, share their most wild and crazy obscure casting stories of the process of casting certain yeah. people for certain jobs, because this is the stuff that people, that the general public doesn't ever hear about or know about. Right. And then have actors come on. A great idea. And, and tell them, share their stories um, about how they got their one big role. Like, was it a whole big dragged out process or did fate intervene? And you, you know, you were on an airplane somewhere and you had to turn around and fly back and all of a sudden go test, test for a show that you'd never think you'd get because they, you'd already been turned down for it and rejected for it two months earlier. <laughs> Shit like this happens all the time, though. And That's I, a and good I love, idea. I love those kinds of stories because, a, I think it gives it it gives people, especially maybe actors, but it gives or aspiring actors, it gives them hope of like, hey, yeah. just because you don't get one project, it doesn't mean something else better is going to come along, or it doesn't mean that you never know that project can come back around in different ways. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, or, and, and it's, just, yeah. it's just fun facts for the general public. because we. I love that know. idea when, when, if you need help getting that rolling, you call I know. me, I'll help you you're out. Like, you're like, I'm going to pocket that right. <laughs> yeah, that's a great idea. That's pretty, I won't I steal it though, fun. but, but I'll I help. Think it'd be super fun. Just because like, I, you know, I know enough casting directors that I think would be more than happy to go on for like a little, you know, a, a fun 30 minute. Sure, nobody ever, they never get the spotlight. They probably. I know, and, and they deserve it. They work hard, yeah. so. I'm, I've been pondering that. Well, so obviously you auditioned for Willow and did well enough that they're like, well, okay, you're not for Willow, but we want to put you in the show. I mean, that's yeah. that's got to feel good. Yeah. Oh, sure. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, it's always nice. And like that, you know, that's, uh, it's not, it doesn't always happen that way, but it's not completely uncommon where if, you know, if you're up for a show, a series regular, and, you know, if you don't get it, of course you're bummed, you're, you're you know, you're just, you feel so, oh, it's like heartbreaking. And yeah. especially for a series regular role, it's absolutely devastating. Um, but then, you know, but you know that the, sh the producers and the showrunners, you know, they love you and to have, and to try to find a way to somehow bring you back and be a part of it. That's just really cool. You know, that is pretty cool. I, I, that would make me feel, it, there's no way I could be an actor because I would just be devastated at every no. I would just be <laughs> 
<laughs> you'd be like, no, I'd go into depression. I'd cry. Yes, I just couldn't <laughs> handle it. I was like, you got to have thick skin. I was like, well, I don't. So <laughs> you know, I, know, I know myself. That would not work. It's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> is, so is, you know, what are you most recognized for? Is it Clueless? Is Clueless the one that are, you, know, you get recognized, I get recognized a lot? For? I get recognized a lot for Clueless. Um, I would say Clueless and Bring It On would be probably the yeah. two. And I'm talking about to this day, going to the grocery store, going to the bank or <laughs> wherever of being recognized or a restaurant, you know, and, and being and being recognized for one or both of those movies. Um, but also to, you know, lately, I think because it's more recent, um, Cruel Summer, which was a show that I just. Oh, you were so was, good in that, too. We oh, love that. That was one that we uh, kind of binged. You know, oh yay! You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a such a well done show too. I think yeah. it's so funny because I think you know before it actually premiered, a lot of people, um, I think you know because there's teenagers in it, they assumed it's going to be like a teen drama. Right. We actually are not categorized as a teen drama. We we were it, we're just a mystery thriller, suspense, um, psychological thriller mystery, and so. Um, but see, I love those kind of shows. And so Yeah, it's a fun mystery show, I think. Yeah, I'm trying to put the pieces of the puzzle together and try to figure out who's lying, who's not. And and I gotta say, I knew it was gonna be a fantastic show, but you never know to what level of success it's going to do. You know, you never know beforehand before it's released. So to as as hugely successful as it ended up being, it was one of the top shows of 2021 you know yeah. um and uh, to get all the critical acclaim that we got we literally got consistent across the board yeah. on every level well, it was really good incredible reviews and it was it's just like that's just a special treat and a blessing you know you go yeah. oh thank you like that's awesome it, so. it, i think that I, i'm maybe making this up but i think that the show starts in 1995 is that 93 well well does it, does it start in, look i should know this um, I know. It's it's. Does it open up in ninety five? I was thinking. I was thinking it did because the reason it kind of rang a bell. I was like, well, that's interesting because that's when Clueless came out was in ninety five. So I was curious. You know, you're you're back in the nineties again, playing. You know, in the nineties, that's kind of like you went. The full industry circle. doesn't want me to grow up. Nobody wants yes. me to grow. Up. I don't want me to grow up. I don't want to get any older. Well, why would you want to? I'm with you. Exactly. Hey, it's look, no fun. Whatever, whatever, <laughs> hey, look, whatever job I can get, that's fine if it's in the 90s. I don't care. No, but that's that's what was really cool. I was actually really impressed with how the how the creators ended up telling this story in three different summers, 93, 94, 95. And not and not and not showing it in any kind of like you know linear or you know chronological order. It was very we jumped, we time jumped constantly in every episode. And I love that that and of course our cinematography was phenomenal. Like literally, <laughs> you knew you knew in every you knew in every scene what year you were in, not wow. just because based on the actors' physical differences. But because of the cinematography, it was all different colors and tones, that's and they neat. were all very yeah, that's neat. And, which is something you don't really see that often on TV. So I thought that was really cool and really innovative. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 a really good show. That was one of our favorites during our isolation uh, periods. We've had several now, but I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I think LA has just been. It's so funny because in everywhere around the country everyone's like been in like an isolation. They've been out of it. They've been in it. They've been out of it. I feel like LA has just like kind of like been in it ever yeah. since 2020. LA is just, uh, we're staying here. We're, I mean, it's, and it's, and like, you know, we make them, I mean, it's not that we can't go out. Yes. I've been to restaurants, you know, but we still have to yeah. kind of wear masks inside. We take yeah. them off as soon as our, so we're all, and you know, and LA has actually been quite considering we're the most populated city in the country. We bought, we really all kind of came together and all you know supported each other as you know one big city and community in terms of hey let's the fact you know let's just all come together just wear your damn mask so we can get out of this sooner you know right and uh, that's right yeah. yeah yeah that's exactly right so it helped me timeline wise did yeah. clueless come out first and then your stint on fresh air uh, uh prince of uh, bel-air or was it the fresh prince of bel-air i'll get it out say or was it reversed was that first fresh prince of bel-air was first that's what I thought. That's what yeah. I thought. I was like, I was like, I'm pretty sure that that was the earlier one. Fred, I, let's, 
I should probably look that up. But yes, I'm almost positive. I think, oh, wait, wait a minute. Maybe not because, okay. I'm so not sure. I thought, like, well, I was thinking it was, but then I was like, I, I thought, I thought, it, you know what? It may have been around the same time. And here's why I think so is because, so Clueless was my very first movie ever. Um, yeah. I had only, I had only lived in LA for like a year and a half when I got that movie. And, um, and then I think maybe I'll have to double check this on IMDb, but I think maybe before Clueless was released, maybe I, that's when I did the recurring role in Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. So, so around, around, the same time. around the same time. Yeah. It has to be kind of neat. Because everybody's so nostalgic about the 90s and you were on so many great things in that decade. And, and they're on really everywhere. In a huge way. I like know. That's crazy. why you, every time you turn TV on, you're on there. <laughs> Regardless if it was shot back then or if it was recently shot. Yeah, if yeah. it's 90s, I'm on there. Well, that 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 actually says a, a lot about you that you've you've had such a, a terrific career and it, and it's still going. I mean, you're still yeah. just just wonderful and everything you do. It's a, it's been great. It's been great. Well, I've enjoyed it. I feel very, very lucky. I feel very lucky. Let me ask you about one because I'm nerdy that ended too soon. Um, Dark Angel. Oh, Dark Angel. I know. I love that what one. What happened to season two? <laughs> yes. I mean, James, that was James Cameron, I think. How do you not give him a season two? I mean, well, no, they had, they did have a season two. It was just, they went. Oh, you're talking about with the season. It was, yeah. And, like, what season happened two with season two? Season two was different. That was the end. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. Season three. Yeah. It, oh, it and went crazy. They, no, it, I mean, they had a half dog, half human. For back then, that was probably a little too soon for that. But, but yeah. Do you God, think it, that's a good point. Do you think that would, would it be better received now? Because I, mean, I love that show. You know, here's here's what I think is I think, you know, season one, I think because it was it was truly innovative for its time. Yeah. There hadn't really been a show like that at that point. Not not on major network anyway. Not on, you know, That's that right. was a That's that, right. that was prime time Fox Network. And so um and it was so it was so creative and it was and in some ways realistic. I know it was set in the future, but you know, no one knows how the future is gonna go, but it was somewhat realistic in that. Hey, you, it actually made you think, oh, but this, this maybe could be possible. The go we wouldn't put anything past the government. The government really maybe could genetically engineer, you know, these babies yeah. that were being born That's right. and then military train them and, you know, to be these almost like superhumans in a way, but that are worth millions of dollars. And, and so, um, I mean, it was just such a cool, cool concept, you know, and that's why I think season one worked so well because it sort of it was. A oh, yeah, you're more... you're refreshing my memory now because yeah. you're right. Season two, it had a completely different feel to it. Completely different. Season one yes. was a little bit more grounded and had a little bit more um, edge to it, a little bit more reality. Um, yeah. re reality in that thinking into the future, if that makes sense. Do you but, think do you think somebody like said you need to try some of this in order to keep it on the air or was that just a creative way that they went i really have no clue i wasn't in season two um well there's the problem that was probably why it no, wasn't grounded you know what that's we that, solved that's it. We solved that's it. where they messed up let's let's you know what send an email to james cameron tell him that's what went wrong <laughs> that's what went wrong it's time to reboot it you know what it is, is they, for season two, what they did is they completely, they completely changed everything. It was, it, yeah. it was no longer about the whole backstory of where Max, played by Jessica Alba, where yeah. she came from, where the X-Fives just like her came from. Like how, you know, it's like, we knew what happened. We're getting bits and pieces throughout season one of how it all started and what happened. But I think season two needed to be a continuation of that and, you know, I would love, I would have loved to have them find all the, the X-Fives, you know, all of us. They, I think they only found, I forgot how, maybe a handful of them, myself being one of them, but season two just went sort of, I think over the top in that they had kind of human creatures. And I don't yeah. know, you know what I mean? I, you know, and I think they maybe had an idea to try to go just like a different creative way and was hoping that it would work. 
what I say is, hey, if season one worked, why try to fix something? That why are you broken? messing with that? Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. was one of her first roles, I think. She was pretty new when that came out. That was her, well, that was her breakout role. She had, she had yes. worked before that, but that was definitely like her big breakout role. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I miss that show to this day. I'm like, that's one of them that Such a I'd love show. to see. Again. Such a yeah. great, I haven't seen it in forever. And every now and then I'll get a, a message from um, a fan that um, will send me some clips from uh, from season one of clips that I was in. And I'll literally sit there and watch it over and over going, oh my God, I, I remember, like it brings back so many memories. I don't think it's on anywhere right now. I'm sure it's out there somewhere, but. I don't know if you I think if you somebody would, be showing that somewhere. You'd think because I think I would think it would still make a it would still do quite well. There's still a huge fan base for it. Yeah, yeah. So I just had we, this. We, we need to start sending emails. Yeah, That's, I know. Who, need, who do I need to call? We need. We need, need to start making phone calls. We we got to get rolling with this. <laughs> I just had this moment of panic. So before we came on the air, we were playing around with the uh, filters, and I just had this moment of panic that I forgot to turn it off, and I was like, okay, it's all right. Is that why you kind of went up going? Oh, yeah, I was like, oh. Are you trying, are you trying to figure out? <laughs> I was seeing if my eyebrows were staying in place or if I I love, I love, that's so typical <laughs> female to be able to introduce the guy to, so oh, these, these cool filters on, on Zoom. We, we played like, with them probably for too long before we started this. Way too long with eyebrows and lips. Well, you played a little too long with the lipstick. Like the I did. Color, that was a little. I, did. I played around too much with it. Then I got stuck oh. on the the goatees. That was kind of <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you'll have to tell me. Am Am I right that and this is dating both of us a little bit? But weren't you in an, a um, after school special? Yes. <laughs> Not so. I don't remember which one it was, but I was pretty sure I'd seen you in one. Every every Gen Z viewer watching that will watch be like, what's an after school special? <laughs> I know. That's why I said I'm dating this a little. Those. I used to love those when I was a kid. I did too. I I think I think it was called, oh my God, it just came to me. I think it was called Teenage Confidential. Oh, it was. You're right. It was. Because <laughs> because I did, and and I was older then, of course. I was probably uh, married and had my own kids, I think, about the time it came out. But that was, you know, we were still having that on when they had those uh, movies on we still watch them because we grew up watching them yeah oh, I, mi I miss those yeah that one I think that one starred Morgan Fairchild as well Morgan Fairchild was in it and when we worked it who was lovely by the way and when we worked together because her and I are both from Dallas Texas we yeah. actually went to the same high school she graduated from the same high school that I went to how neat how crazy so it was just really cool to meet her and and get to work with her. oh she's she, amazing she was so she's amazing yeah I got to write that down. I need to get her on the show. Oh, she's so lovely. Yeah. You're like, <laughs> Morgan, her child. I'm sure she would love to talk about Teenage Confidential, the, the movie, the after school special. That's that the angle I'm going with. 50 years ago. <laughs> That's the angle I'm going with. And I, and I wrote it without looking. So and later I'm going to be like, who is Mason? I know. <laughs> who, who's Mason? Far field. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so let, let me think. I wanted to. I want to make sure I get a few of these that I wanted to talk to you about. Um, sure. Okay. Oh, I do got one. So you played. I think you tell me if I'm wrong. Um, you got to play William Shatner's secretary in Boston Legal for a couple episodes. Paralegal. Paralegal. Okay. Okay. Oh, so, secretary. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very sorry. That's terrible. That's terrible. Woo! So yeah. So you were a paralegal for 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 William Shatner. Yeah. Pretty not, great. Not a bad person. Not that's, a bad person to be paralegal for. That's not terrible. It's not, not terrible. terrible. It's so funny because when that. So I don't know if you remember how they initially introduced that show. So. I believe, if I remember correctly, that was originally um, uh, set up as I think didn't didn't they didn't they bring them on to another show a tail end of another show first? Yeah, yeah. I was going to say maybe the practice is what launched it. Maybe. Yes. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. The pra Okay. Yeah. So the practice is what. So this is kind of a spinoff of the practice. So it's what it's what's called like um, like a backdoor pilot. So That's we, right. they introduce That's right. characters on on a different show. And uh, as like a to be set it up for a new show, and so then that that's what um, that 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 show was. And I remember 
my God, no, that's another example of where I had read for, uh, for a role on that pilot, um, did, you know, didn't get it, but then I, I had read for recurring roles. And so when, the, and obviously somebody over there really liked me. Um, and so they decided to give me this, it was a smaller thing, but I appeared in more than one episode. So like they can yeah, yeah. bring me back as, as William. Sh and I'm like, let's see, to play William Shatner's paralegal. Yeah, I think I'll do that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you have to, so I, just for the, to say you work with Shatner. Well, yeah, that and that and and um and oh god, why am I spacing on his? Oh, I love him, James James Spader. I mean, oh my gosh, yes. I mean, oh, yeah. And these are a great show. Oh my god, William Shatner first and foremost. I gotta say, he's he's absolutely hysterical. He was he's exactly <laughs> how you would expect him to be. Yeah. Um, and then and then James Spader, so lovely, so nice. Um, total professional. He seems nice. Yeah, both of them, both got both legends, I should say, were just joys to work with. And you, you'd think they, they might be a little complicated or they might be a little, you know, but no, they were absolute joys to work with. I love that. So we loved you on Castle, and then we were thrilled to death when you showed up on The Rookie. Yeah. Like, very nice. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. I like the ones that it's connect nice. a little bit. Yeah. You know, yeah because yeah, it's yeah. just the... The uh, the Nathan Fillion connection there. We, that's why we were. That's the only reason we watched Castle to begin with, and then we're like, "Oh, it's a pretty good show." And then we did the same oh, yes. thing with the rookie. We're like, "Well, we're watching it because of him," but then it's like, "It was a pretty good show." Now, I feel like Nathan Fillion is sort of like the new Kevin Bacon. I for some reason I feel like he is sort of like you know you, you know the whole six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Oh yeah, I, yeah. For me, I feel like that's who Nathan Fillion is for me as Kevin Bacon is to other people. I like that. Degree. I like that. Although you know? we could play that game probably with you. Pro oh, I'm sure. As Kevin Bacon. As me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's me as Kevin Bacon. <laughs> yeah. We can play that game because <laughs> you've got a lot I've of stuff. In this industry. That is how long I've been in this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to, um, I interviewed, uh, John Wesley ship, um, Oh, a week or two ago, and uh -huh. that, and and he was asking who I was having come on the show, and I, I let him know you you were coming on, and she's like, "That's a Dawson's Creek person. She was on Dawson's oh, Creek." So I was like, "Yes, she was." There's another one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh my yeah. god! That's another one. Speaking of similar to, to Buffy, so oh my god, Dawson Creekers. I thought Buffy fans were like crazy and diehard. Oh yeah. my God. The Creekers or I don't know what the they Creekers. call them. But the I think that's Creekers, what it is. The Creekers, yeah. They they are there's so I never I never knew that there were so many out there that it was such like a huge thing. And it's so funny because some of my closest friends, I I shit you not, some of my closest friends, it took them like when we like when I very first became friends with these people, they didn't, you know, they didn't make the 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 connection. And then it was when that they of course they literally rewatch the entire series, <laughs> like all five, five, six seasons. Yeah. So they, they will literally rewatch it every year or every other year. And they're like, oh my, I literally got a call. This girl, Rachel, she's one of my best friends now. We've been very close for many, many years. This was like maybe five or so years ago where she called me out of the blue screaming. It was probably longer than that, but she called me out of the blue screaming. screaming <laughs> you were on Dawson's Creek. I mean, flipping out. I love it. As Over she should. As she should. I have not seen, because I, I recurred on that. I, I did, yeah. I don't even know how many episodes I did, but I did a bunch. I was in the, I, I was my it, first episode. It was I several. Believe, was, yeah, my first episode was, I think, in the season before the last season. That's when they introduced my character. And then the the last season is when I did, was when my whole character arc was, uh, I was, I was uh, Dawson's produce, like producer boss, who was very, <laughs> very Hollywood. Um, <laughs> very nice. And, and, and again, that's another one where somebody, a fan online had sent me a scene and I hadn't seen that since it probably came out. That meant that long ago. And I'm watching going, oh my God. Like, and, and I'm sitting there laughing because it was actually a really funny scene that I completely forgot about. Yeah. It's, 
it's just crazy to walk down memory lane and think, think, oh my God, I look like a child. Oh my God, I was a child. <laughs> well, yeah, I know. I know. When you when you go back 20 years, you're like, oh yeah, oh, I thought geez. I was grown up, but no. Yeah. <laughs> right? I'm like, oh my, I thought I thought I was playing a big girl, you know, like playing this Hollywood producer. I'm like, I was oh, a you know what we we were talking about that Thursday night block. Well, mm-hmm. after LA Law, it was ER and you were on ER. Yeah, oh my God. That's, oh wow. That's how, oh wow. Yeah, I was, I was. Um, that was, I have a funny story about ER. So I did an episode called A Bloody Mess. Um, that's the title <laughs> of it. And literally it was called A Bloody Mess because the, the, my storyline part was, is that we're in college, we're college girls and we're on, and we're animal activists. So we're on our way, we're driving, we're driving to, um, to we're driving somewhere to, to protest against this one facility that was uh, that was going to be, you know, slaughtering animals. And so, you know, here we come, there's like three of us, you know, college girls, and we had a bucket of, of uh, like a big container of, of fake blood in, nope. in our car. So we're on it, we're driving on our way there, we end up swerving to, to avoid <laughs> hitting like a squirrel or something. We end up, I guess, hitting a tree or whatever. So there's blood all over us. So that's the backstory. The point being, on the show, you first see us, we're covered head to toe, literally, blood everywhere, <laughs> car accidents, and and the and the ER doctors, including George Clooney, are all trying to figure out what happened to these girls, what's wrong, why are they covered in blood? Are they what's covered in blood? blood? And so and so when so during some some downtime on set, my one <laughs> experience of meeting George freaking Clooney. I'm covered head to toe in blood. Of course, no makeup. It's blood. Blood was my makeup. Literally, I couldn't sit down, couldn't lie down because they they put us in a pan and literally poured buckets of blood on us, fake blood on all over us. So I was <laughs> sticky, and I'm sitting there going, "I'm at craft service," and then I hear George Clooney's voice. I'm like, "Oh dear God! Oh dear God! Oh dear Come God!" Out. I was like, "Just coming in, like." This is my one chance to meet him, and you can't even see my face. <laughs> like I look dead, literally. That was my one time I got to be George Clooney. Was that covered? That's a great face. story. That's a great story. So yeah. is is there is there a role that you turned down that ended up becoming something that you go back and you're like, I probably I probably should have done that. No, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> I can tell you, I can tell you, there's probably been a lot of roles that I was up for that I was turned down for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Any of those but, stick, like stick to you? Like you're like, oh, that was, that was a tough one to get over. Yeah. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Yeah. Like there is, I mean, look, if I were, I don't even, I wouldn't even know where to begin, but if I were to tell you all the different roles that I was up for, had tested for, um, you know, you, I mean, I would be a massive star right now. So it's hard not to like, I mean, of course I've long let all that go because that, but that's just a part of being in this industry. That's right. Part of being I know, that's why I said, I couldn't do it. The whole, <laughs> the do whole it. point is, is to be like, all right, but you know what? Clearly I'm on the right path, even be a contender for these kinds of big projects and a contender for these, you know, these bigger, these huge roles. It's, it's, um, I'm on the radar. You know what I mean? So it's like, if you keep going at it, you keep going at it, you know, it's, it's got a statistically. Well, it no, I think you've had it. just a, a great career. I mean, you've done have, so many just terrific things. I, I yeah. Have. You know, I feel very grateful for that, you know, and, and Hey, I'd much rather have a lasting, you know, a longevity in my career right. than having shot up so fast and becoming super famous and then nothing, you know, um, it's for me, it's never about, it's never been about being super famous or, you know, headlining everything. It's always been, I want to make a living. I want to be able to be a consistent working actress and respected for it. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think that's really great. I've got a really close friend of ours and is, you know, she was, she was a terrific actress back in the eighties and nineties, but the role that, that, that she still kind of, She's a little sensitive about. It, let's say it that way. She's got a good sense of humor about it. She's got she so so she'll let me tell it, but she's got a good sense of humor about it. But so she she's gonna watch us start crying. Oh yeah, she'll start crying. So she was. I, uh, wait till I tell you what the role was. So oh, no. so she was up for the role and got down to 
her and one other actress. Okay. And they brought them both in. You know, it's back in the, uh, I guess, in the 90s. So they brought them both in and they had them both signing the contracts, you know, as they do. But they hadn't picked the one they were going to have yet. So between her and this other person. So the the role was uh, Rachel on Friends. Oh, so, so she it was Jennifer Aniston that got the the role. Oh, <laughs> oh my God! Which, I mean, it's hard to be upset about that because obviously that was the perfect role for her. But still, right. she she's like I, that happens all the time. She said, but oh, that God. doesn't happen all the time, you know. <laughs> that pretty- I mean, oh God, yeah. I mean, well, Jesus. I mean, Friends is so iconic. You know what I mean? Like that would have been a hard, hard blow. <laughs> yeah, that would be a tough one. That, that would that would be a, that would be a tough one, but you know what? It's, it's, it's one of those that you know. However many years later, after after you hopefully healed, you have to go. You know what? That role was meant for Jennifer Aniston, and you know, it's 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 you have to just. That's it. That's it. And that's how she does it. She's like, oh, she was so good, though. I mean, how do you get upset about yeah, that? Of course, but you oh know? my god! But let me tell you something. If that were me, I would love telling that story because I've been like validate me, me validate me <laughs> well yeah uh, yeah and I mean how I mean think about it if you got to lose out to somebody I mean you know I mean, that's not exactly at least, losing at least it wasn't voice. somebody horrible who yeah. you know you know what I mean like at least I mean my god to be able to say well, oh. Jennifer Aniston like that's that's oh. a good person to lose that's pretty validating right there. That's itself. pretty good. That's pretty good. I'll give you, I'm going to give you, uh, this is my one friend connection story. I'll give it to you real quick. So my, uh, I told you my wife works for Live Nation. Uh-huh. So there was a period of time when, this has been several years ago, when her um, co-worker was um, the sister to David Schwimmer, right? So her last name, her last name was Schwimmer. And and she's she kept talking about her, you know, because she's working with her, and she's talking about. Her. I was like, she's out in L.A. Her last name Schwimmer. I was like, is she related to David Schwimmer? And she's like, no, she's not related to to David Schwimmer. She's not related. And then at some point, she was over at her house, and and she called me. You know, my my wife calls me, and she's like, there's pictures of David Schwimmer everywhere. <laughs> Like, I, I told I you. My words. She's totally related. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Oh but my it's kind of like in LA, everybody's related to somebody. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and also too, I think it's similar to, you know, in Los Angeles, it's such a big, big, big city, but it's also a very small world. And I think, you know, it's like for us, it's totally normal to walk into a restaurant you know, and, and see Jennifer yeah. Aniston and see, it's normal to be driving in your car and you're at a stoplight and you're like, oh, that's George Clooney, you know, that stuff, <laughs> it's just stuff that you expect. It's just, it is because they, everybody lives here. Like, it's everybody like, lives there. So, like for us, it's, I mean, for us, it's actually not that big of a deal. Like we're just kind yeah. of just used to it and sort of kind of almost like numb to it. I mean, it's cool, but it's yeah. not, but I mean, my God, if you didn't live here and you were at a stoplight, if you were just here visiting you oh. try to stop like you see yeah. George Clooney next to you. Like you, you crap yourself. Well, you, you, you'd still be telling you. the story. You'd tell that story forever. Oh, for sure. For sure. But you know, I, uh, I still tell the story. I went to, I was in New York years ago and rode the subway and I was sitting next to um, John Boy, you know, the actor that plays uh, John oh, Boy yeah. on the Waltons. And, and it's just normal and stuff. Yeah. And, you know, you're trying not to be, intrusive and be a pain and stuff but i'm like right, right. you know it's John you, like, you, gotta, you gotta say something right no, i didn't know i didn't say yeah. anything i just but i still you tell the story you contained yourself <laughs> yeah because and, and another reason i wouldn't make it in hollywood because i'm a fan i drive everybody crazy <laughs> You I mean, be like banned. before before we get started, you know, if, if I could just get a selfie, <laughs> <laughs> you'd be that one, that person. Oh, I'd be that guy. guy. Yeah, That's be so terrible. Fun. You're That's you're so you're much safer with me on Zoom. Yeah, you know, you got, <laughs> there we go. There's, there's some distance there, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> I hope you don't have that tracking device on here and trying to track. Yeah, right. <laughs> right? Oh, like, oh, good. I got her address. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I got it now. That's right. That's right. I'll come out and see. <laughs> I'll show up. I'll be like, totally. 
So, I was just, I just wanted to see if you wanted some coffee or anything. I know, right? <laughs> no, coffee. I'd actually let you in. If you had coffee in your hand, oh, okay. I for right. sure would let you in. That's what's your, what's your coffee drink? So, okay. So lately I have been in a kick of at Starbucks. They have, they have an iced shaken espresso that is called, um, the brown sugar oat milk. Oh, I've seen cream. that one. Is it good? I've almost gotten that several times. Let's just say I get emotional when talking about it. Um, let's just say I it's 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 like my medication. Like I I kid you oh, not, I, I gotta I try that. People, I joke with people, but I'm not joking. I'm like, I have a prescription from my doctor and I need this every every morning. That's how I'm justifying spending that much money on this brown sugar oat milk. It's so good. It's so good. Yeah, see, because I'm not too far off from that because I get the uh, the cold brew, like a, oh. a caramel macchiato, but cold. So it's, that's probably similar because that's espresso that's in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cold, cold, cold brews are great. Cold brews are great. I love cold brew. I need to try that. When I see it on the uh, menu, every time I go through the drive-thru, I'm like, and, okay, not today. I end up sticking with the same thing. I need to try that. Oh, I, I order from, I pre-order from the app. That way when I go... Before I'm headed to my workout, I go pick it up. It's ready for me. So I'm in my car, and I'm actually doing a spin class with stopping twice during the class so I can lean down and take a sip of my brown sugar oat milk drink. It's really impressive. smart. It's I'm really you. jealous. That it is I'm, smart, right? Thank it you. is. It's really smart. I'm really jealous that you um, that you spin. I have because because like I work out, I do, but I run. I, I do the running, but I have trouble with the um, the seat. It's like it's too no, uncomfortable. No. It's just oh, too uncomfortable no. for me. But now, oh, if you no, really, no, you know what? No, you don't sit that much, right? Yes and no. You, they have you up and out. Like you're out in third position. There's different positions they have you in. But yeah. okay, so the seat is uncomfortable at first. Um, when I first started spinning, and I got I've been spinning since 2011, I think. So for like oh, yeah. ten years, you're a pro. And and it's it's. I mean, like let's just be honest. I'll be honest. Like. I was sore down there in the beginning. Like, is it is yeah. uncomfortable? Your body takes it takes adjusting. So we got to give it a fair shot. The more you do it, okay. it's going to pass. It will. I think I'd and like then it. Become addicted. Because you know, one of the things we tried when when this pandemic was going on and we were kind of you couldn't go anywhere is we tried to to ride bikes, and and the the riding the bike wasn't too bad, but by the end of it, I was so sore because of the yep. seat. I was just it was killing. I ended yes. up borrowing my son's bike shorts because he rides, and and that helped a little bit because it was a pad. But I was like, I can't do spin class; it's going to kill me. You know what? Some for for some some places will still what have like we call it a butt pad, but it's actually a seat pad. That's, That's what I need. People who are just starting, it, it pads it. So like because because you do you have to adjust. Yeah, Otherwise, you're I need one that's like the next day. this. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can, I need you your body like gets, six you layers. Can, and then just I'll peel just bring, the layers. Just bring your pillow and just like be, be that weird guy that brings a pillow and just I, literally sits on his pillow while you spin. You'll be that guy. Yeah. I could, I'd be happy to be that guy. <laughs> like, you know, I, I've, I'm so lucky because I've got this local gym that it takes me like two minutes to get there and it's 90% just the elderly working out there oh, and you know and that. which working out they're basically in there you know but they're all geared up it's hilarious they're all geared up and they oh. just socialize they're just and they and they're in there from like seven in the morning till noon i mean the same people i don't mean coming in and out same people whole morning I think that's so cute. oh it's good it's the best it's the best Aww. you know i had the there there's one guy and he's a ex-military guy and he uh -huh. he gets on the he gets on the uh elliptical and he's just going he's just going like by the time he's done he's on there you know for over an hour and by the time he's done there's just puddles of water on the floor and he goes and gets a mop and mops them all up i mean he just works himself to death that's what he does before he starts working out that's his warm-up oh, right that's just so, his warm up that's his warm-up so we had there was a period of time a couple of years ago the air conditioner broke and it was in the 90s inside. It was Ooh. miserable. And, Ooh. and so I'm there and there's a fan that's not plugged in, but it was next to the treadmill. So I plugged in the fan, you know, turn it on. 
And I hear behind me, he's like, what are you doing? I was like, I was plugging, I was plugging in the uh, fan. And he says, he says, you want to be a man or a mouse? And I was like, I, I'm feeling kind of mousy. It's 90 degrees in here. <laughs> oh, you got served. You got served by an old dude. Man. I did. I did. I was like, okay. Yeah. And he's on, and he didn't even slow down. He's just yelling at me while he's just, you know, 100 miles an hour back there. <laughs> You're like, okay, never mind. I'm yeah. just kidding. I was I was just like, <laughs> okay, I'll leave it. I'll leave it undone. Never mind. Oh, wow. He's like yeah. hardcore. <laughs> he was hardcore. He was hardcore. I think the, the other nerdy show I need to bring up before we wrap up uh, was oh, Heroes. You got a couple episodes oh, on that uh, original yeah. series. Yeah. Yeah. You were great on that. Heroes was another one. It was so good that first season. Yes, you know that it, it it was. I was actually really into Heroes the first season. Yeah. Um, um, and I loved the the mystery surrounding my character too, because for a while I was I was the face of of the uh, yeah. before they introduced that character, which was played by I believe Malcolm McDowell, who ended up. Yes, it was. Um, yes, it was. And. Uh, and so, but it was such an interesting role for me because I loved the mystery of it. And here was again yeah. another out there, like, but but done in almost this oddly realistic way, or like in some way that we where our imaginations go, and we want that to happen in real life. You know what right, I mean? Like if if we actually had superheroes, that could be the way it would happen. Totally, maybe. totally. Yeah. Like I would love to encounter randomly someone who has yeah. these cool powers and be like. Your secret's safe with me. I won't tell anyone, but I, I, but I dream for that. Like, I really want that to happen, you know? Yeah, me too. It was such yeah. a great show. Such a great show. Yeah. While you were acting in all these great shows in the 90s, I was running a comic book store. That was what I was. Oh, very cool. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was. It was the best job ever. You know, I mean, oh. I was, I owned it. And as a, like, as a poor college student, unbelievable. The best. Oh, Not the easiest to raise a family on. Oh, I once, bet. once I, I got married, sorry, I'm I was like, okay, I, I gotta go get a job. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you want people? Okay, enough, enough of the. That's great. That you're time playing, to but time to close got, the store. I gotta go we got get kids. A, we gotta get, go get a job. <laughs> oh, I did want to mention the uh, uh, movie uh, Mercenaries. Oh yeah. Just because it had just such a kick-ass female cast in it, it was unbelievable. So that, I I gotta say that movie was so much fun to make because. Yeah. It was, um, what I loved about it is when I first read the script, I loved that it was an all, you know, the leads were all female, but these yeah. were like, these were smart, intelligent, strong women. Granted, that they may have been criminals to some degree, but the point <laughs> being, that's, that's, that's beside the point. They were badasses yeah. though. Yeah, no, they were. They, they each, they each, the reason why the government chose them to be mercenaries to try to go help save the president's daughter was because they were specifically chosen because they had very specific talents and gifts for what they did because they were so intelligent. Like I was a bomb expert slash um, uh, I could fly anything, right? And like then you had, yeah. so you had each character had all these crazy talents, and I just love that they they actually visualized and saw women in this light. And we were doing something good, even though we we yeah. were see us in prison. We actually were doing something good, and you saw what our talents were, and we put them to use. They were just strong women characters. I know it was a little, a little bit ahead of its time because you didn't see a lot of movies like that back then. No, not that it's, it's been a, a a ton of time, but a little it, bit. You know, it, has, it hasn't been that long ago, but I think. But usually, movies like that, what we've seen is we've seen maybe a role, like one female role, where there's just right, and then all the rest of the cast is usually the men. You know. Yeah, yeah, I know. I I always thought that was such a, an interesting and, and fun movie. So it was so much fun. And yeah. it, it had this moment where we were supposed to be a little over the top, but that was intended, you know, it was supposed right. to have some satire element to it, but it was also, um, but I mean, my God, it was so awesome to work with Zoe Bell and Vivica A. Fox and Kristana Loken and, and, uh, oh my God, Brigitte, you know, oh my God, what a legend, like she was like, yeah, and she's the nicest Every time I mentioned her name, most of the men are like, God, I would be scared shitless of her. I'm like, I'm like, no, she is the most loveliest, nicest lady awesome. ever. She was so lovely. She, was she so was a, a little terrifying back in the day. Oh, sure. On, on yeah. screen. Sure. On screen. Abs absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but she's she's a rock star. So it was it was I, that movie was such a blast to do. I love it. 
I love it. Well, well, Nikki, thank you so much uh, for taking the time with me. This has been, I knew it was oh, going to be good. It's been wonderful. Oh, thank you wonderful. so much for having me. And, and this is, I love uh, interviews that are just kind of like chilled and relaxed. You just talk about whatever and you just laugh. Yeah, all yeah. Time. That's what I love. yeah we're just, yeah, we're just having a little conversation. <laughs> just having, having a little conversation and, and then, and then we have to, we'll be in touch about uh, contacting James Cameron. Oh, yeah, yeah. We have to contact. We have to, well, Let's see. We we got to do that. We've got the the uh, the podcast that we got to work on. We have the, pod- we have the a casting lot of couch. We got to get on. Yeah, yeah. We got to get that. And then I think we need to pitch this idea about you know actors playing the roles they originally tried out for. That's while because you could use that in all kinds of shows. That's a genius idea. I think that's a good idea. I think so too. So it's okay. So a couple quick things before yeah. before we wrap up. Um, anything you're working on that we can kind of keep an eye out for that we haven't talked about yet. Yeah. Um, so I did, I just did um, in December, I, I shot a really fun, fun uh, Christmas movie that will be out later this year around the holiday time. And um, at the t- it was called Christmas in Leavenworth. I don't know. I've heard they might change the title. Um, but when I find out uh, what the official title ends up being, of course, I'll post it and promote it and all that stuff. Um, but that's got a great cast and we shot it in Leavenworth, Washington, which is also known as Christmas town, USA, literally Christmas nice. town, USA. <laughs> and, uh, and, um, and it's absolutely, it's stunningly beautiful there, but, um, but had such a fun time working on that movie. And that'll be out again later this year around the holidays. So well, that's awesome. That's awesome. And I, I should have mentioned that, that my oldest, when she was going on about bringing on, you know, her other thing. Is Christmas movies. So she came back to me later that day and she's like, she's been in a Christmas movie, Dad. <laughs> she's been in a Christmas. Your daughter was just educating you. Like, oh, she, she was. Did. I was like, okay. Yeah. I was like, all right. I just took her word for it because that's what, you know, as soon as as soon as Thanksgiving's over, she's all in on the Christmas movies till oh, New Year's. Every female, not just in America, but globally. Yeah. Tunes in to Lifetime and Hallmark, and we watch. We live, it's almost like we binge all day and all night long. Every Christmas movie that they've done in the last like 15 yeah. years, we don't, I don't care if I've seen it five times already. You better believe I know. I'm watching it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. I've seen it happen. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Like the demographic for that is massive, like internationally, it's huge. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, okay, so where can we find you on social media? Social media. So uh, my main my main platform is Instagram, and on um, on Instagram yep. I am I'm at the Nicole Bilderback. Very um, nice. Um, I'm also on Facebook, but I'm not. I don't. Facebook isn't really my as much of a big thing as for me. I do post, but um, I am Nikki Bilderback on Facebook, and then I, you know what? I suck at Twitter. My Twitter. My, yeah. my, my I Twitter's kind of rough. I think it's harder. I never. I never was good at it. <laughs> But you know what you to, you know what you to need to, to do. School. Yeah, well, you need to get on TikTok. That's what everyone keeps saying. And I'm like, but what do I do? I just like I, record a bunch of. Well, videos. I tell you, I tell you, I and I say that as somebody that can't do TikTok. I mean, I'll post a little bit of videos. I wish you would do more dance videos or something. Like, do yeah. do something on. Yeah. I, I I need to do something, but 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 like Alyssa Milano's on there, and she does a lot of the you know have the fans will be dancing to something she was in or, or wearing something and she'll kind of, you know, do the dance or whatever from the show she was in. You could totally do that. Cause you know, if you got on there, people will be doing the the cheers and stuff from bringing on. And then you could just do those. With I them. Need, see, I need to do more. I need to figure it out because how do people do, how do people make all these cool videos where they've got like, like narrations on top and, and they can yeah. make points and all of a sudden it's like their bubble pops up of their thoughts. Yeah. I'm like, how do you do that? They, there should be, you know how there used to be like the Excel classes that you yeah. would go to? That We need one for TikTok. We need one for TikTok and I need to go to Twitter school. Well, I could probably do a little of that too. But Twitter's mean. It can be very mean. It is. It is. You know, Instagram's so much nicer. You just post your pictures. I love, I love Instagram. And I, and I think Facebook is a little too old school now for me. Yeah, yeah. I, I it's, it's, you it's where I'm hanging out. The old it's, guys. <laughs> I remember at one point, like a year or so ago, I made a joke and I had I had posted 
I'm like, has anyone else noticed that Facebook is is like is like MySpace now? Yeah. And it's funny, everyone my age sort of busting out laughing. Oh yeah, yeah. The younger ones. The other half was like, what's MySpace? Yeah, what's what is, MySpace? What's my and I'm like, oh, no. I'm like, never mind. Whatever never happened mind. to, to delete, Tom? Delete. Was it Tom? It was Tom, right? Tom. What happened to Tom? Tom Tom is a gajillionaire and ran with his money and said goodbye and peaced yeah. out. Good for he just, him. He just wanted to be our friend for a little while, and then he was good for uh, him because he's not dealing. Look at all the owners now; they're all dealing with lawsuits and all. Oh stuff. yeah, it's a, Tom it's got a, out. It's Tom a mess. Got out in time. Tom was smart. Tom was smart. Tom was smart. Okay, so so Nikki, last thing, if if you're willing, so we were talking off camera that you're a Marshall Thundering Herd fan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My my relatives, my uh, my dad's side, uh, my aunt and my uncle and my cousins. Um, all live in um, Huntington, West Virginia, which is the home of, yeah. as we say, go herd, go herd. That's what we all do. Go herd. That was probably bad. Anyway, the point being, that was, is, that's what we say. We say go herd. Thank you. Go herd. Like there's a little dance that me and my family do. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I'm I'm a herd fan. And um, I remember when they shot that movie, um, We Are Marshall. Yeah. Um, so my uncle. Uh, he so he, he ended up working with the location scouts and the producers of that movie because my uncle happens to own a lot of uh, properties where they actually yeah. shot. Oh, and very so nice. They had to go, so he got. To, and of course, he doesn't even think at the time to tell me this. And I'm like, Uncle John, I could have hooked, I could have helped you negotiate prices for have them shoot. <laughs> like I could have hooked you up with a deal. I yeah. know what happens when they shoot that stuff. <laughs> yeah, you could have helped him out. I, I could have hooked him up. I could have negotiated a better deal yeah. for him. But um, but yeah, so West Virginia, um, yeah, Heard has kind of a Marshall's got a little special place in my heart. <laughs> I know. I, I I had no idea. That was such a nice surprise. You know, that's my alma mater. So most most people are like, who? What? <laughs> Yeah, I was so uh, so thrilled yeah. that you knew one that you knew. You said Huntington. I was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh. although although most people, if you say Marshall, most people would know Marshall yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So that's good. That's good. Well, thank you so much, Nikki. This has been a blast. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, and I can't wait to see this when it's out. Let me know. Yeah. Then what? Then you'll you'll spend another hour of your day. <laughs> another. <laughs> Twenty years funny. from now, I'm going to be sending you the clips like these fans. I'll be like, you remember when you were on that show? Do you remember, <laughs> do you remember when we did this? <laughs> and I'll be like, vaguely, I think. <laughs> yeah, vaguely, vaguely. No, 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 anytime I have a blast. I'll the, the guy that showed up on your doorstep with the, the oat coffee. But he, you know, had, brown he had sugar. coffee for me. So I took the coffee, said thank you. And yeah, it was great. It's just the door. <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally. That's so All funny. right, Nikki, hold on one second. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Nikki Bilderback, such a fan of hers. And she was so wonderful. That, that was such a fun interview. And we talked probably way too long off camera. And she was just very gracious with her time. So just really appreciate that. She's done so many great things. If you haven't seen Cruel Summer, do yourself a favor and watch that one. She is amazing in that one. It's it's so good. Yeah, it's a good bingeable uh, show. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you haven't done so yet, we could really use the help with our YouTube channel, MeisterCon Pod. If you could subscribe, that would really help us out. You'd be doing us a favor. Um, you can find all 350 episodes, audio and video on our website, MeisterCon.com. It's got a great blog. It's well-written. It's geeky that uh, that my son, Brett, writes. He's, I mean, he's a talented writer, and I realize I'm saying that as a dad, but he really is. So check that out. You'll enjoy it. If we're doing any conventions, if we're um, doing any live events, if we're doing in-studio events, all of that will be on our website, MeisterCon.com. So until next time. Bye, everybody.